believe. Residents in Delhi last night were bracing themselves for another night of fear and sleeplessness following a series of bizarre attacks by the Indian capital's answer to a very nasty horror film, The Mysterious Monkey Man. This is from The Guardian on May 18th, 2001. During the early summer of 2001, the residents of New Delhi, India, were thrown into an uproar over reports of a mysterious four-foot-tall figure with thick hair and sharp metal claws. A 2003 issue of the Indian Journal of Medical Sciences looked into the strange phenomenon known as the alleged monkey man, attributing it to an instance of mass hysteria. From May 10th to May 25th, 397 reports were made to the New Delhi police of a monkey-like creature, or something similarly bizarre. The majority of the reports claimed of an ape-like creature, sometimes three foot tall and sometimes six feet tall, or anywhere in between. He was said to have a thick hairy mat of fur and glowing red eyes. He was reported to have Freddy Krueger-esque claws, and at times was thought to be wearing a leather jacket, donning a motorbike helmet, or even wearing rollerblades. These reports were made seriously and in complete earnest, and a near 95% of them were made from the impoverished neighborhood of East New Delhi. The police contacted Delhi Zoo authorities and experts say that no simian would ever attack without provocation. They conducted medical examinations on a portion of the victims, but claimed that nothing concrete had been found. The first obvious assumption was that the figure was a local hairy man mistaken for a monster, and the dense eastern slums of New Delhi made pursuing the figure at night near impossible. Police Commissioner Suresh Roy would claim that local doctors advised him that they are bites from an animal and not that of a man. He would also claim in a 2009 episode of Monster Quest that he dispatched 3,000 officers during the panic and seemed to take everything at complete face value. For an incredibly creative take on the story, you can check out the 45 minute long episode that dramatizes some portions considerably and fails to mention the mass hysteria theory. More reputable sources like The Guardian cover the story and the account of a boy named Jonas living in the suburb of Krishna Nagar. His version comes off as less sensationalized and provides a far more reasonable explanation to the phenomenon. The creature had its hands on my thighs when I woke up. It looked like a langur, Jonas recalled. When Rahena, my mother, picked up a broomstick, it jumped out of the balcony. A langur is an old world primate native to the Indian continent, but only maxes out around 31 inches, or about two and a half feet. Not fitting any of the police descriptions that were between three and six feet, Another long-shot explanation would be an extremely displaced western hulak gibbon, the only ape native to India, although it typically only maxes out around 35 inches. And now, a clip from Monster Quest depicting the same monkey man. As absurd as this all seemed, the city was truly gripped with fear. The injuries shown on clips from Monster Quest are admittedly not just a light scratch. They appear pretty vicious. Otherworldly, however, not likely. Out of the total reported cases, 60 of them claimed serious injuries. Two individuals had even died in the panic, with a suspected third. The important distinction is that both confirmed deaths 
came from residents suspecting they saw something, and falling off rooftops and down staircases while attempting to flee. The academic journal published in 2003 seems to debunk the major points of the tale at every step of the way. One of the journal's conclusions was that among the injuries observed, they were only possible with a blunt or pointed object, seemingly excluding any possibility of a rollerblading monkey man. 89% of the cases were from individuals of a low socioeconomic status and low education, with the near majority of them being adult males. New Delhi was also in the midst of a brutal heat wave, and it was common cultural practice for the men in the house to sleep outside on their rooftops. The journal also illuminated the interesting coincidence that 67% of the cases reported were during a city-wide rolling blackout, implemented to save power in the poor eastern part of the city. Many of the cases were reported from men who had been directly woken out of their sleep, claiming to see the Monkey Man figure despite their pitch black surroundings and abrupt awakening. As for what actually attacked these men, that remains a strange mystery. Likely explanations call for a human man attempting to burglarize homes, or an overgrown primate that was particularly aggressive. The journal would deduct that a few factors likely led to the curious phenomenon known as mass hysteria. A few attacks were initially reported and taken entirely serious by the local police, and the wave of belief spread like an infection. None of the victims saw anything concrete, and the initial attack descriptions are incredibly vague, not necessarily pointing to a primate. However, the press would take the story and run wild with it. Once the first news report hit that claimed a monkey man was responsible, every further report became monkey man related. Even within the framework of a monkey man, the description among reports seemed to differ dramatically. Sometimes it is completely covered in fur, sometimes it's not. He is sometimes three feet tall and incredibly fast sometimes six feet tall and incredibly strong. Sometimes he wears a leather jacket and rollerblades. And on a rare night, you may just catch him in a motorcycle helmet. The journal's most damning point was that once the press began floating the idea it was a hoax, all reports of Monkey Man attacks halted immediately. One of the defining aspects of mass hysteria is the sudden acquiring and dropping of symptoms, seemingly on a dime. It was almost as if the press had created the monkey man overnight and took him out to pasture a few months later when the story went stale. The myth bears some similarities to a few popular pieces of folklore, namely spring Hill Jack from Victorian England. A story deserving of its own focus he was a dark figure draped in a leather jacket, donning sharp, pointed claws and glowing red eyes, and occasionally wearing a helmet. spring Jack was believed to be able to leap incredible distances rooftop to rooftop, and instilled a fair amount of terror into Victorian England, supposedly scratching his victims along the way. A more recent story and closer to home was the instance of marble statues of Hindu deities all across India becoming alive in September 1995, developing an unquenchable thirst for milk. It ultimately proved to be a case of porous stone and siphon theory in action, delivering the milk to nearby gutters. It's clear to reason that these stories are the result of mass hysteria and a good hoax. But just in case they're not, maybe don't sleep on the roof anytime soon.